Hello and welcome to Institute of Directors, yet another conference on corporate social responsibility. The 18th edition of the International Conference on Corporate Social Responsibility was held on the 21st and 22nd of December 2023 at the iconic Taj Lands End in Mumbai. The theme for this year's conference was CSR and exploring evolution of ESG in the new world economy. The conference saw the participation of over 450 delegates over a period of two days from prominent captains of industry, CSR professionals, government, academia, civil society and diverse stakeholder groups, continuing its legacy of drawing a large number of participants from various walks of life. Initiating the proceeding for the day, the conference started off with the inaugural address of the Chief Justice of High Court of Bombay, Honorable Justice Devendra Kumar Upadhyay. In order to extend a warm welcome to Justice Upadhyay and honour him, Mr. Desh Deepak Verma, IAS Principal Advisor, IOD and former Secretary General of Rajya Sabha, read out Justice Upadhyay's highly illustrious citation. I have known uh, Honorable Justice D.K. Upadhyay from my Lucknow days and I used to consider him one of the most intelligent and very clear in his thinking. Uh, law officer and a very distinguished and advocate and he made a mark for the government and with successive governments he continued to be the chief standing council for the government and from there he rose to these heights wish him all all the best for the years to come uh, at the outset I thank the Institute of Directors for inviting me to inaugural session of this 18th International Conference on Corporate Social Responsibility. Corporate social responsibility has become an essential and integral part of the economies worldwide. The very idea behind CSR and ESG is that every individual should feel responsible and accountable in relation to his activities which while using the limited resources on this planet. CSR and ESG practices are on an upswing and more and more businesses are realizing its importance for a robust economy and a prosperous society. After the highly anticipated inaugural address by Honorable Justice Subhadhyay, IOD's Chairman of Western Region and former Chief Secretary of Maharashtra, Mr. Sitaram Kunte, delivered the welcome address which was followed by the President's address by Lieutenant General Srinder Nath, PVSM, AVSM, and addresses by eminent dignitaries and guests in the inaugural session. It gives me immense pleasure to welcome you all to the wonderful and dynamic city of Mumbai on the momentous occasion of the 18th International Conference on Corporate Social Responsibility. The corporate citizenship has evolved encompassing the provisions of Companies Act 2013 and the actions that helped serve the society in an inclusive and responsible manner. The idea of ESG, the idea of looking after the environment of our country becomes extremely important for us to look at it. In our corporate activity of Pawai and Thane, we recycle 4 million liters of water every day and use that water for recycling for the last 25 years and the total city of Mumbai does not recycle 8 million liters. So a business enterprise can also be a leader and many of the factors who are receiving awards tomorrow really need to be complemented because they have shown leadership in an area which can be an example both for government and individuals to actually act. And hence, sir, my congratulations for giving these awards because those are the ones which will be emulated by the rest of the people in the business world and also be able to take it in all. Congratulations to everyone and the Institute of Directors. My respects and salam to you for carrying out such an important conference that you have here today. Thank you very much for inviting me. I'm privileged to be here today. Thank you, sir. With companies increasingly recognizing that sustainable practices contribute to the environmental and social well-being, 
it is imperative that we shape the outlook of the new generation to deal with the realities of the new economy. The Global Schools has been active for the past many years, giving students experiential learning in ESG. The evolution towards a more sustainable and socially responsible business landscape heralds a future in which success is measured not only by financial performance, but also by the company's positive impact on the world and its culture. In this context, embracing CSR, sustainable initiative, and ESG principles is not just a choice, but an essential pathway to enduring success in the 21st century. The landscape is evolving, you know, from corporate social responsibility. We are talking now of ESG. In the new economies that we are talking about the world, it is, too, it is imperative to recognize the interchangeability and the interconnectedness of both CSR as well as ESG. We want to be part of this where we start doing things voluntarily and therefore even for voluntarily imbibing of governance or knowledge, IOD plays a huge role in doing that and I wish that they keep on doing this. My compliments to all of you gathering in large numbers at 9 a.m. to listen to all of this that shows that there is something that is striking in all our hearts. Thank you very much and I wish the conference a lovely success. Thank you. And please start investing CSR, not spending. I'm not talking of expenditure, I'm talking of investing CSR into skill development, skills that are of the future, and things like big data, analy big data analytics, AI, IoT, um, co computing skills, all the skills of the future that are going to drive the world towards a new revolution. You start investing into it, and let us all reap the benefits of a developed nation which our Honorable PM uh, has envisioned. Industry is not present everywhere, but, but the requirements of giving back to society is pan-India. Here the role of the state-owned enterprises is extremely important. Every year there is a theme on which the contributions of public sector will flow because that thematic, that thematic uh, aspect of the aspect of the projects gets the traction of aggregation. Now the project size, the ticket size of the project is getting bigger, and that is where the impact is largely felt. It's a growth story of the public sector. If you see the Nifty PSE index, it has outperformed all the other indices. CSR is one aspect, is one aspect, very important aspect, where public sector need not have to really, they, they are, they, uh, the heart and soul of public sector has, has a CSR philosophy of giving back to the society. On behalf of IOD India, I hereby convey our thanks and gratitude to all of you for being with us in our 18th International Conference on CSR. We particularly express our gratitude to a large number of very generous sponsors and partners who have encouraged us so lavishly by being with us today and tomorrow. The opening session also marked the occasion for the release of the convention souvenir by the chief guest and the esteemed dignitaries. After a stimulating inaugural session, Institute of Directors continued with its strong legacy and brilliant track record of bringing together eminent and illustrious leaders, distinguished and esteemed thinkers, renowned experts and policy makers across governments, businesses and civil society. The conference saw deliberations and insightful exchanges on issues pertaining to CSR and evolution of ESG in new world economy. 
we have come a long way a long way from you know what used to be the business of business is business to responsible capitalism and corporate purpose which was you know we've been talking about that for some time but now we are now talking about companies adopting what is called a triple bottom approach that is of profit ta ta uh, people and planet you know, which is really aligned to you know we look at the economic social and the environment <laughs> Taking care of community is not just a byproduct, but rather the guiding principle. As many of you would know, 66% of the Tata Group's profit go back to the community, and through this we have been supporting various initiatives of importance across India and also abroad. Skill has two levels. One is skill for survival, one is skill for you know, specialization. As you go to the bottom of the pyramid, the requirement for skill to survive is very higher. Can I be doing this, doing that? So how am I going to skill them? So we run continuous skilling program. People are going to evaluate what you are giving back, what you are doing, adding to the profitability as an index. And net zero can be the net best profit what world is expecting in some coming days. We cannot make everyone a millionaire, but everyone can live a life with dignity. And for that, we need to go deeper and deeper and need to reach those set of society, which uh, I assure you, wherever we are present, we will do it. For that to happen, we need your continued support in multiple consumption of other products too. Thank you for the time. Most of the state governments, Government of India, are spending almost 3% of the GDP on education whether it's um, school education, higher education, school education, etc. The, the target is 6%, which has been uh, long advocated, discussed, debated. There's a gap. So this gap of funding of higher education, which cannot rely only on public funding, plus, as I said, the gaps in terms of skills and entrepreneurship capabilities, the corporate India has, I think, uh, a huge opportunity here to invest, to create manpower for the, for the next sustainable growth uh, trajectory. So the G20 is committed to these sustainable development goals and it's the first action point of what we need to look at. So it only makes sense that if the governments come together to discuss this, the governments of the most powerful economic nations, then the corporations in these countries as part of their responsibility should also look into this. I'm very, very pleased to see uh, since the beginning of the discussion today, including the address by the Chief Justice, that there is a greater awareness and uh, uptake by the corporate sector, especially in India, to realize that this, it, this is an issue that they need to address and they need to integrate in their policies uh, in relation to corporate social responsibility. Instead of corp corporate so social responsibility, one could also refer to it as corporate climate responsibility, given the urgency of the situation. But that is just semantics. But CSR plays a crucial role in addressing climate change. It will, by en encouraging business to adopt sustainable practices, as we have heard in many examples, but that, that needs to accelerate and reduce their carbon emissions throughout the supply chains. And then they need to engage in CSR activities by investing and promoting the use of renewable energy sources. That the biggest problems of the next century will be solved through American ingenuity and Indian uh, brain power. The scientists and engineers and corporate innovation that will happen here in partnership with the United States is what I am most excited for. These are big problems that need big solutions, and I know the U.S. and India can do it. private sector can be started, a startup of yesterday is coming with new ideas, which is, let us say, gels with the current thinking and the current needs. Government cannot be that agile. So matching the resources which the government has got with the agility of the private sector is the most necessary thing for development. ESG is not a favor you're doing to the planet. ESG is not even your responsibility. It is your dharma. It is your kartavya. 
it is your being because if you're intelligent and if you genuinely believe you're part of the planet and the process then what you do to the planet through the processes you employ is equally critical you can clearly see that the focus on um, uh, focus on how uh, the independent directors and our board is actually driving the sustainability agenda has become so much stronger and richer the policies the market the sentiments the uh, the energy cost energy ecosystem that will transition towards a low carbon economy and that transition if we are not aligned or ahead of that curve will also keep coming and hitting us so the problem is also a problem the solution also is a problem if you are not ahead of the curve today more than 10000 families who have put their trust in us for the redevelopment of their buildings and most of them we have already they are already staying in their new homes and uh, basically thereby creating a better environment in the city in fact hearing the speakers i see there are many things that you are already doing and many more things that can be done in fact we want to follow your footsteps of how we can make this a better place rather i take this opportunity to thank the government and especially the policy makers who are thinking from all the angles 360 degrees they are thinking from all the angles in terms of preserving the environment at the same time facilitating the businesses to sustain rather it's a beautiful blend of environment and development together stimulating day 1 the day 2 of the conference was witness to further discussions on csr esg and sustainability and most importantly saw case study presentation from award winning companies on csr hr excellence and innovation management these presentations were chaired by eminent domain experts mr shrinivasan satyamurthy ias advisor tiw capital singapore and mr sitaram kunte IS Chairman Western Region Institute of Directors former Chief Secretary Maharashtra CSR whether you're doing it outside the purview of your stakeholders or you're doing CSR for your stakeholders in both cases it affects your ESG rating CSR or ESG begins from our home everybody is aware that we must contribute we must pass on the resources what we have to our next generation because we are the custodians we are the trustees and we must hand over all the natural resources to our next generation it is our personal social responsibility not corporate social responsibility we need to have continuous engagement between donors and donees uh, we need to empower communities by taking not just finance but also shram dan and uh, we need to create a vibrant uh, partnership that uh, under the new education policies uh, institutions are and higher educational institutions are are uh, encouraged to have industry institute partnership cells effectiveness of the every rupee spent uh, is uh, is, uh, is att attained by reviewing the programs on a regular basis msmes who are now only required to do csr if they have a mandatory requirement under indian law or they do it voluntary now they will have to come together they will have to group together to implement csr programs to stay relevant in the global market if you want to stay relevant you want to supply the global market and we want to become a global power i think msmes must not only adopt but really really pioneer csr for the future the leading voices of the industry came together to recognize the achievements of their peers in the field of csr hr excellence and innovation management
was truly a momentous occasion for IOD. As the Chief Justice of the High Court of Bombay, Honorable Justice Devendra Kumar Upadhyay also graced the Golden Peacock Award ceremony in the evening along with the former Chief Justice of India, Honorable Justice Uday Yu Lalit to give away the coveted awards. The industrial activity, the economic activity in my country is not taking the CSR as a mere duty or responsibility but trying to excel in that and trying to step forward with some additional ideas for the betterment of the society. Mere economic activity, mere profit making is no longer an ideal for any corporate setup. Apart from these ideals, we also discharge what is our social responsibility. Association with this Institute of Directors has begun just a, less than a year back. But I'm proud of being part of the jury, which has now selected the awards for CSR responsibility. Thank you so much. Thank you. Along with the institutional awards, the ceremony also saw the conferring of the Golden Peacock Award for Social Leadership for the year 2023 to Dr. Nirja Birla, founder and chairperson of Aditya Birla Education Trust and to Dr. Suman Minda, chairperson, Suman Nirmal Minda Foundation of Uno Minda Group. Members of the Institute of Directors and ladies and gentlemen, a heartfelt thank you and deepest gratitude for this very prestigious recognition. Being honored with the Golden Peacock Award for Social Leadership is a moment of great pride and a huge milestone, not only for me, but for my family and my entire team. And I'm deeply humbled by it. I accept this honor for social leadership today and thanks respected jury once again for considering me for this prestigious award. The influence of IOD extends far beyond the boardrooms and now it resonates in the corridors of economic growth and sustainability. Currently, through its the Golden Peacock Awards Secretariat, it evaluates roughly um, 1,000 top organizations for various categories of Golden Peacock Awards under its Golden Peacock Excellence Model. With the winding up of final session on embracing CSR for better compliance, the Institute of Directors completed yet another successful edition of the International Conference on Corporate Social Responsibility in Mumbai, which received widespread appreciation for its value addition, its quality of deliberation and the opportunities it provided to the practitioners and stakeholders of corporate governance, CSR and ESG.